1v1, Comets Pass, north side. We've got Vindicar X rocking a Space Marine he's brought along. Chaplain Diomedes, some Terminators and some Assault Terminators as his elites. He likes his Terminators, I guess. Oh, let's turn the Fog of War off. In the south side, we've got Mana WTF as an Orc. He's brought along some Storm Boys, Weird Boy Zapnoggin and some Mega Knobs. And welcome to the first ever Dawn of War 3 replay on this channel. This is a tournament game. It's a semi-final match from the ESL Cup on April 30th. Best of three. This is the first one. And hopefully I'll bring you more from that cup. I've got it down, slowed down to quarter speed here. So I can talk about some things before we get into it. Namely, first of all, the replay system itself. It's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Having to switch between each player to see what they're up to is going to be tough. Especially on 3v3 games. But since there's so many... Uh, player specific UI elements. I'm not sure how else they could have done it really without having that being a requirement. I would also like a way to follow units around and an option to have the fog of war displayed for all unit all players at the same time rather than one at a time because that's kind of awkward. The big problem though are bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. The replay system has various UI bugs. If we switch over to Mana WTF, you see on the right side. We have no doc doctrines at all displayed. I can assure you he has some. We just don't know what they are. Which is rather annoying. Other bugs I've seen include the drop pod status for Space Marine players not being displayed. In this instance we can see them fine. I've also seen players having doctrines listed on the right side from a whole other faction. Which is pretty interesting. But we'll model through these early problems and bring you some replays hopefully that kind of stuff gets fixed quickly. I'm going to try and work out what Doctrine's mana is using, but don't expect me to be able to work it out in the midst of all the stuff going on. Maybe some more experienced Orc players can tell you what's going on there. Let's speed it back up to normal speed. And uh, see what Vindicar X is up to. He's gone for his usual build, which is straight into a barracks with his first Servitor, and then two more sent out to cap points. And he gets his scouts out and he's going into the Salt Marines on his drop pod. And now they may be asking, why did he not get any tactical marines on the field at all? That's because tactical marines are seen as relatively weak right now in the current state of the game, especially early on. And most players will only get one, or in this case, not get any at all. Uh, they don't really engage or trade with anything efficiently, especially Eldar, because Eldar stuff has shields, which means the tactical marines are dropping units while the Eldar stuff doesn't. And I think because of that, uh, Dire Avengers can outshoot them pretty easily early on. And of course, they've got a grenade as well. So, yeah. Not a great time for Tactical Marines, which is kind of strange because you'd expect them to be the staple backbone of your army as a Space Marine player. But that job is uh, for Assault Marines as it stands right now. And Tactical Marines are used more as a specialized ranged infantry unit with their weapon upgrades. Their weapon upgrades are very good. But they're also very, very expensive. You have to pay for each one individually as well. Assault Marines don't have that problem. You can get power swords for Assault Marines. But um, you just need to unlock it at the Arsenal one. And all your Assault Marine squads have them. And they are crazy. They do true damage. Which does full damage to both the armor types. There are only two armor types in the game. Let's talk about them briefly. We have normal armor. Such as these scouts. And pretty much all infantry has normal armor. Some of the more specialized stuff might be heavy like knobs and terminators and that kind of thing and some elites will have heavy armor too here's the assault marine drop and they're going to win this engagement now with the scout support assault marines supported by scouts is very very difficult to deal with early on assault marines are just bullies with their high health high dps and mobility and scouts can support them with those awesome stun grenades look at these guys 1500 hit points 72 melee dps which turns into 72 true damage DPS when they get their power swords. And they are, I think, the only non-elite unit in the game that can jump. So they can get in and out of combat, which is a pretty big deal in Dawn War 3 when you can't retreat. So as I was saying, there's also heavy armor, which is um, for big fat things and vehicles. There's normal damage, which does full damage to normal armor. 
and only 22% against heavy armor, so not great for big stuff. You've got armor piercing damage, which is full damage against heavy armor, but only 40% damage against normal armor, so that's your more specialized anti-vehicle weapons like las cannons and stuff. And then you've got the true damage, of course, which does full versus both. So true is pretty awesome. Lots of elites will have true damage. And of course, assault marines have true damage when they get their upgrade. We have four scout squads here for Vinda Correct, and I don't think he's going to settle on just one assault marine squad either. Let's look at his doctrines. He's got improved listening posts, which is pretty popular right now. We've got scout stripe, which is pretty cool. Do bonus damage on their initial attack if they attack from stealth, which happens a lot. And he's got Emperor's Influence, which I also use. Reduces the cooldown of your standard, which is a big deal. You'll probably see Vindicare X use it pretty soon in the next big engagement. Maybe when the Storm Boys hit the field, because he will know what Elite's mana is using. Oh, oh, here we see the Storm Boys right here. First Elite show up. These guys are jump troops, and if they have scrap, which is a unique mechanic for Orcs, they can... Get, pick up scrap with any unit and it'll make them better and they can use a suicide bomber oh look oh this is upgrades it I see I thought it straight up gave it to them but it just makes it better look just wiped out the scouts with the suicide bomber he also chopped down his assault marines that was a really good engagement for mana really on the back foot now Vindicate I assume we'll see another uh Assault Marine squad, maybe... Has he got an arsenal up yet? No, I don't think he has. He's going to say maybe he'll try a Tax Marine Flamers. Those things are very powerful but expensive. You need to pay 50 power for each Flamer. And you need to pay 50 power to build your arsenal in the first place. So just to get one... Is a... 100 power just to get one Flamer up in the first place. Compare that to 75 power to get power swords for all of your Assault Marines. Big, big difference there. I think they need some tweaking in that area. Uh, assault Marines right now are 500 rec, 15 power, I believe. Could use maybe a price increase up to 20, 25 power. So you can't get multiple of them quite as easily. If Shooter Boys here upgraded with scrap, so they have their stick bomb. You can tell the units are upgraded with scrap. They do get slightly different visuals. Also, their portraits change, which is pretty handy. What do we see in terms of the elite points? We do have an elite point generator over here. In the north, I guess this is for Vindicare. In the south, he doesn't have the point yet and no elite point generator on it. So if we switch over to Vindicare's display here, he should be getting his elite points faster, although they're out of sync, so it's hard to tell. He's going to get Diomedes in 14 seconds, or at least he can. It's not always prudent to get your elites as soon as you can. Although usually you want your first one right away. Sometimes it's better just to wait for a better moment or save up for a bigger, more scarier elite. Very cheeky over here, building a listening post in the backfield. And this is Diomedes coming in. A support elite. He only has normal armor and normal damage, but he gives off some crazy buffs. Not sure how he has normal armor with Terminator armor on, but there you go. So every time he does a critical strike, which is every six hit by default, he gives off a great buff, which gives shields to everyone. Also, you can uh, speed them up and stuff if you use this thing, Liturgies of Battle. Bonuses to his normal melee attacks. I think it makes all of his hits crits as well. And he's pretty easy to use. You just hit stuff and sometimes hit Q. I believe that's... It gives a uh, global. It gives buff to all of your units, no matter where they are, which is pretty weird. I'm not sure if that's intended when you use this liturgies of battle. But yeah, getting a nice AOE shield up every sixth hit is pretty damn good. It's not a massive shield, but shrugging off a few hits is always useful. I do think though that Diomedes is animated very, very poorly. I mean, a lot of people have had problems with the animations in this game. I haven't really. I think they're fine for the most part, but I think Diomedes is just animated badly. Look at his... What is he doing? It looks very, very strange. The way he swings his left arm, like he's not in control of his body, like he's a puppet or something. Very strange. He also jumps when he uses his critical strike, which um, 
I'm sure people are going to love because Gabriel Angelo's jumping was so popular. In the south side here we have some capping going on. The Nicorette is very, very much behind here. He has double scouts and Diomedes and that is it. Looks like he's trying to tech up right now. In fact, he has got the Machine Cult up and we're probably going to see a land speeder pretty soon. He does have a sort of means loaded into the drop pod. And that's what Space Marines are so good at, reacting and turning the tide of fights with their drop pods and their standard. I really like the way they've differentiated the factions, it's really cool to see. Orcs with their scrap and their war towers, there's the drop from the Assault Marines, and they take out those Gretchens. And you see Eldar with their teleporting structures and stealth and all that kind of thing. If we switch over to Mana, we can see he has three war banners up. This is how Orcs tech up, you just build war banners. They are 75 power each though, which is pretty expensive and they go down pretty quickly. They also let you use the war ability which pumps up your stuff with some orky rock music which is amusing. I do like the way you get these very big obvious um, icons for the elites on the minimap too. That big rocket for these storm boys jumping off the, the assault marines here. These assault marines might go down. They very much might go down. They need to jump away. And that's what makes the Assault Marines so good. That they can jump away like that. He's going to chase him. He's going to try and bring him down here. Oh, and we saw the truck for Mana. You may have noticed. There it is. You can put boys inside of it. And, uh... Oh! He dodged the suicide bomber there with the Assault Marines. Nicely done. But now he's getting his generators hit. As I was saying, he can put boys inside here. Shoot them out. And they stun. Also, because he has Storm Boys... He has a suicide bomber ability on his truck, which is pretty good. Just shoots out one lone storm boy. Not sure where he comes from. Oh, here's the first uh, land speeder. These guys are awesome. Massive mobility, as you might expect. And some decent DPS, really. Let's have a look at the DPS. 74 range DPS. They are awesome for taking out and chasing down those early game elites. Especially the single, the single entities like weird boys and stuff. And enemy librarians. Also, if you get a group of land speeders, you can go and hit some enemy generators very effectively and very quickly. The land speeder came out with a shield there. I'm not sure why that... Do they always come out with a shield? Oh, they do, I think. Because you can get a doctrine which gives land speeders shields that um, regenerate, which is pretty powerful. There is the weird boy. He's over here. I'm not sure what he's up to. Very powerful nuka elite. Do they call him a nuka? They call him nuka slash support. I guess he does have that teleport thing but um, he has some incredibly powerful offensive abilities can be quite vulnerable but brings a lot of pain this is mana going for the generator the shield generator is going to go down I think I can't see on this I'm not sure if I can see anywhere what escalation phase we're on usually it would show you in the top right corner but that's taken by the uh, replay UI Apologies also, by the way, for the um, overlay you'll see in the top right corner. That is to cover up a progress bar, which would otherwise... Oh, this weird boy's dead. Look, see? Exactly what I said. Land speeder does not mess around. Can take out those early game elites pretty effectively. And it's double land speeders here. Down goes one, though. He's got him, his tank busters, which do bonus damage to skimmers, as you can see there. It's much like last cannons. Helps you counter those early rushes from these guys. So as I was saying, there's a bar in the top right corner which would show you exactly when the replay was about to end. Which is not good for a viewer's perspective, so I've covered that up. Usually I really don't like using overlays of any kind. I like the game to be shown as it is. Hopefully there'll be an option to toggle that at some point. Down goes this generator, which is going to give... 500 wreck, 1 elite point, and 100 power, I think. Yeah, it shows us. There we go. That can be a massive deal. I can put the nail in your coffin. Not always a game winner, though. I've seen various times the the team that takes out the first shield gen not going on to take the game, but it is certainly a big boon. What's he got on the way now? Oh, he's got a knob squad. And they are upgraded with scrap, which allows them to throw choppers. Which is a pretty strange thing, I think, for a knob squad to do. But hey, that is... Oh, hell, here's an arsenal too. As I was saying, there are some strange abilities in this game. Like, knobs throwing axes is not 
something you'd associate with a knob squad. Also, the venerable dreadnought elite can uh, like rip up chunks of the ground and throw it, which is a bizarre thing for a dreadnought to do. I think it's got a massive plasma cannon, but it's going to throw a rock at you. Apparently, very strange. Oh, it's a stun. As you can see, those rockets are hitting infantry. There is no, there's no um, concept of accuracy in Dawn of War 3, I don't think. Whereas in Dawn of War 2, you'd have LAS cannons which do massive damage to all targets, but will struggle to hit anything smaller than the vehicle. In Dawn of War 3, everything will hit everything all of the time. But of course, they've um, got around the got around the issue by having armor-piercing weapons do less damage to normal infantry. What's this? Here's the knob squad. They build up that red bar of doom. I'm not sure exactly what it does. Let's have a look. Not sure. Builds up there like fury or something. They've got taunt. I'm not sure that if that has anything to do with that red bar. And there's that chopper toss. It's nice that I can mouse over this stuff and see the range of it and everything. So here comes Vindicar X back out. Oh, he's got some Plasma Gun Tactical Marines. What exactly do the Plasma Guns give you? 33 normal DPS. That can't be right. They must do true damage or something. I'm not sure. Is that right? Was all they give you some a little bit extra DPS? They do have an overheat mechanic and that kind of thing. Gets hot. There we see. Damodes can now be recalled. He uh, he might want to wait now, Vindicarex, for his assault terminators. Oh, as I was saying that, he calls in his regular terminators. No, he doesn't. Did he? No, he just called in Diamodes. And now here are the regular terminators. Yeah, maybe he should have waited for the assault terminators because they would do a much better job fighting the knobs. Knobs are heavy infantry, I believe. Yes, they are. So they are great at tanking normal damage and with over 100 DPS, don't really want to f get in a sustained fight with them. The Terminators are getting wrecked here, are they? Yeah, and so is Diomedes. Diomedes is going to go down. Imagine Assault Terminators buffed by Diomedes' stuff. That would be very powerful. He had a weird boy in there. He's got his Scrap Storm thing, which is awesome. See, what is that bar on the knobs? I must be missing something. I'm not sure what it is. There's the taunt. Can't run away from knobs if they're going to taunt you. There's that scrap storm, which damages enemies and gives shields to your stuff. And there's the end of the game. Unfortunately, I can't move the uh, view around at this point or anything, which is pretty annoying. So um, there it is. Vindicar X has conceded, I believe. It might be difficult to tell in future casts who actually conceded or not. But there it is. First game of the semi-finals, Mana takes it, and uh, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.